Hello everyone, my name is Kyle Nart. I'm a nurse practitioner with Norton Cardiothoracic Surgery and I'd like to talk to you today about our open heart surgery program. First of all, thank you for trusting your heart care to Norton Heart and Vascular Institute, a part of Norton Healthcare. Norton Heart and Vascular Institute is the Louisville area's leading cardiovascular disease prevention and treatment program. Each year, Norton Heart and Vascular Institute provides diagnostic, medical, interventional, and surgical care for thousands of patients from Kentucky and Southern Indiana. Norton Heart and Vascular Institute specialists treat patients at Norton Healthcare's four adult service hospitals and numerous diagnostic outpatient and specialty centers throughout the greater Louisville area. Each facility is accredited through the American College of Cardiology's accreditation services, which ensures the highest quality standards for diagnostic services. First of all, I'll give you some general information about our office. Our office is located on the Audubon Hospital campus, and here you can see our office phone number and office location. Should you need anything, any questions, or have any concerns, please contact the number below to have any of your questions answered. First of all, once you are seen in our office, you will be seen by one of our board-certified cardiothoracic surgeons. After meeting with the surgeon, they will discuss your surgical plan, and surgeries are scheduled based upon the operating room and surgeon availability. In some instances, your surgery may need to be rescheduled because of an emergent case. We apologize in advance if this happens, and the surgery schedule will work to get back with you as soon as possible. The first thing that we need to do is to get your insurance company to approve your procedure. Depending upon what insurance company you have, it may take upwards to 7 to 21 days to obtain authorization for your procedure. If insurance authorization has not been received at least 72 hours prior to your surgery, we will need to reschedule that case upon our hospital protocol. It is possible that your surgeon may order additional testing prior to your procedure that is vital to being completed prior to undergoing your surgery. Non-compliance or delay in completing any testing ordered by your surgeon may delay your procedure from being scheduled. Once your surgery has been scheduled, you will be contacted by our surgery scheduler and be given all of the information pertaining to your particular procedure, including date, time, facility, pre-admission testing appointment, COVID-19 testing if appropriate, and any other necessary preoperative testing. All elective surgeries are required to have a pre-admission testing performed in the hospital where your procedure is being performed. It is at this time that you will meet with the anesthesiologist and meet with the pre-admission testing nurse to go over all of your pre-surgery instructions. They will discuss information regarding your anesthesia needs, used during the case, and what to expect both prior to, during, and following your surgery. This appointment will typically last anywhere from one to two hours, so please plan accordingly. As far as FMLA is concerned, if you need forms to be filled out for your employer or company, please let our office know and they will direct you on how best to have this accomplished. Please know that this will be taken care of after surgery and there is a small cost associated with it. Generally, it takes one to two weeks for these forms to be filled out, but if you need something sooner than that, please let our office know and we will try to accommodate as best we can. Once surgery is scheduled and you have had a discussion with the surgery scheduler, please be sure to let the scheduler know if you have any of the following needs, particularly allergies, including nickel allergies or metal allergies, as these may affect um, closure device for your chest, any heparin allergies or anticoagulation allergies, and also any latex allergies. These are very important to your surgeon and surgical team, so please let us know as soon as possible. Also let us know any pulmonary conditions, if you are on home oxygen, and if you have sleep apnea or use a sleep apnea device. You should also let your surgery scheduler know any implanted devices such as pacemakers, defibrillators, or loop recorders, as these will need to be addressed prior to your surgical procedure. If you are able to locate the brand or have a card that was given to you by the uh, implanting provider, please bring that with you to the office for your appointment or send to your surgery scheduler after your office appointment. After discussion with your surgeon, your surgery will be scheduled at one of two locations. Our cardiac surgeons operate at Norton Hospital downtown and Norton Audubon Hospital on Popolovo Road. You can have a discussion with your surgeon about a preference of where this surgery can occur or your surgeon will discuss with you where he thinks this operation best meets your needs. After surgery is scheduled, you will then be sent to the pre-admission testing department where you will spend one to two hours with our pre-admission testing nurses and cardiac anesthesiologists. It is here that you will get all of the unnecessary information for your upcoming procedure. You will have any necessary imaging, lab work, diagnostic testing, and any medication review that needs to occur at this time. Please plan on being at the pre-admission testing appointment for one to two hours. 
to have all questions answered and thoroughly go over all pre-surgical needs. Part of your pre-admission testing appointment will include a thorough medication review by both the cardiac anesthesiologist or anesthesia team member and your pre-admission testing nurse. We will go over some of those medications now so that you have a better idea of what to expect going into surgery. The first type of medications we're gonna discuss is ACE inhibitors or ARBs, or AGO retention receptor blockers. If you are on one of these medications listed below, we generally will have you stop these at least five days prior to your procedure. If you have further discussion about these with your anesthesiology provider or nurse, please contact the cardiac surgery office and they'll be able to instruct you further. The second type of medications we're going to discuss is beta blockers. Some of you may already be on this type of medication, and if you are, we will have you continue this up until the morning of surgery. For those of you that are not on this medication, you will receive a prescription for a one-time dose of metoprolol, which will be taken the morning of surgery. If you do not receive this prescription, either contact the cardiac surgery office or let your anesthesiology provider know the morning of surgery, and they will prescribe this medication to you. This particular medication helps to lower heart rate and blood pressure prior to surgery. The next medication we're gonna discuss is aspirin. Most of you are probably already on a daily aspirin, either 81 milligrams or 325 milligrams. For those that are on the 81 milligram tablet, please continue to take this up until the time of surgery. For those that are on 325 milligram aspirin, we ask that you reduce this to 81 milligrams and continue up until the time of surgery. Both groups, whether you're on 325 or 81, will not take this medication the morning of surgery. Should you have questions about your aspirin, please contact your healthcare provider, or you may be given different instructions from the surgery team member. This will be discussed with you at length at either your office appointment or your pre-surgical appointment. Blood thinners and platelets are another type of medication that many of you may already be on. Please review the list below, and if you're on any of these medications, please let your healthcare provider know as soon as possible that you are taking these medications. These medications need to be stopped, in general, about five days prior to your procedure. In some cases, your surgeon may have you stay on these medications closer to the time of your surgery, but this will be determined on an individual basis. Please discuss this at length with your surgeon so that you're very aware of what's going on and when to stop these medications. Your medications will be reviewed with you at your pre-surgical appointment, the pre-admission testing appointment that we discussed earlier, and by the anesthesia team. Should you have any further questions, please contact our office immediately to have those questions answered so that there is no confusion as this may delay your surgery if you continue to take these medications. Many of you may be diabetic as well, and some of you may even be on insulin. The pre-admission testing department will go over this very detailed with you on when to stop your diabetic medications and what medications to continue. It is imperative that while you are NPO or nothing to eat or drink by mouth the night before surgery, that you watch your blood sugar closely as it may drop uh, without being on your medication. Please talk to your healthcare provider at length about when you need to stop this medication. Some of you may also be taking NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. We ask that you stop these medications at least five days prior to the procedure as they may have a negative effect on your surgery. Please let your healthcare provider know if you have any questions about this and they can discuss if you need to be on these closer to the time of surgery. If you are on any biologics or chemotherapy drugs, please let your surgeon know or a member of your healthcare team. Some of you may be on a medication like methotrexate, which should not be stopped without talking to your prescribing physician. This is something you definitely need to talk to the cardiac surgery team about, as we may need to keep you on this a little longer or stop it. In an ideal state, we'd like to have you off of this medication at least four weeks prior to your planned procedure. Again, have questions about this, please contact the cardiac surgery office or the anesthesia team member as they will be able to answer these questions more efficiently. We also ask that you stop taking any supplements, any dietary pills, and any vitamins at least four to five days prior to surgery. Again, as with all of these medications that we've discussed, please contact your cardiac surgery provider or healthcare team member to inquire further about these. One of the main things that we do ask all patients to discontinue is tobacco use. Tobacco use has a very negative effect on your outcome both during surgery and after surgery. It's really the worst thing you can do uh, prior to surgery and after we've already completed your surgery. We ask that you stop all tobacco use immediately, um, either prior to your office appointment or prior to your surgery, uh, as it can have a negative outcome. Another thing that our anesthesia team will talk to you about while you're at your pre-admission testing appointment is our enhanced recovery after surgery program. 
This particular program aims to reduce pain and reduce post-surgical complications related to anesthesia. This is a national program that anesthesia providers around the country have started, and we at Norton Healthcare has, have adopted this as well. Not only has it shown to reduce length of stay and improve pain following surgery, but it also helps to improve your quality outcomes. Your anesthesia provider and pre-admission testing department nurse will go over the particulars of this process, but in general, you will be given a high carbohydrate drink the night before surgery and the day of. This is a little contradictory to the normal nothing by mouth after midnight that you've always heard, but again, we assure you that it helps with both pain and recovery following surgery. Another medication that you're gonna be prescribed by your cardiac surgery office is mupurisin, or you've commonly heard to this referred to as Bactroban. This medication helps reduce an MRSA pulmonary infection during surgery or after surgery, and you can apply this to both sides of your nose, once in the morning, once at night. Again, this medication is imperative to help reduce the risk of a pulmonary complication following surgery. This will also continue for a period of time following surgery, most likely until you go home. This medication, along with the metoprolol, will be prescribed by the cardiac surgery team if you do not have it already and be sent to your pharmacy of choice. And you can pick this up prior to surgery. The last thing we're gonna talk about from your pre-admission surgery appointment will be the preoperative scrub that you will need to do. This is very common among uh, surgical procedures as it helps reduce the risk of infection from skin. You will be given a bottle of chlorhexidine gluconate by the pre-admission testing department and they will give you instructions on how to use this, but I'll go over this with you now just so you have a reminder. The first thing you're going to want to do is get in the shower and wash like you normally would with your everyday soap. Once you're completely clean, we're going to ask you to take half the bottle of the special soap, rub it in your hands starting at the neck and work down. We do not want you to put this medication on your face or in your genital area as it can cause complications. Once you are done rinsing, we want you to get out of the shower, place on clean, dry fit clothing that's loose fitting, and go to bed that night. The next morning prior to your arrival at the hospital, you're going to do the same thing and repeat that process. Again, starting at the neck, working down, and then once you get out, make sure you put on clean clothing before coming to the hospital. Now let's talk about day of surgery. Once you arrive at your designated facility, whether it's going to be Norton Audubon Hospital or Norton Hospital, you will be given instructions by the surgery team on where to go and what time to arrive. If you are the first case of the morning, you can expect to arrive at the hospital as early as 5 a.m. If your surgery is later in the day, you'll arrive a little bit later. As a disclaimer, surgery may be postponed or even canceled in the event of an emergent case. Please know that we apologize and we'll work to reschedule as quickly as possible, but understand that emergencies happen in the cardiac surgery world. The day before surgery, you will receive a call from Norton Healthcare telling you exactly what time to arrive at the hospital for your surgery. If you missed the phone call or have not been called by 4 p.m., please call our office at the number listed below to verify your time of arrival and any pre-surgical instructions. Please also let the office know if you develop flu-like symptoms, a cold, rash, or fever within seven days of your surgery. Also let your office know if you have had exposure or had COVID-19, as these may be reasons to cancel your upcoming surgery. Please let your surgery team know if you have any further questions on your arrival time or where to go. Your surgery team will tell you what to bring with you when you come to the hospital. Some of the things that we ask you to leave at home are your valuables, such as your wallet, watches, jewelry, those type things. The only thing that you will need prior to surgery is your insurance card and your license. At, after those are given at the registration desk, you can give those back to your family as you will not need them throughout your stay. We also ask you to leave any medications at home as we will be prescribing all new medications for you throughout your hospital stay. Your surgery provider will tell you if you need to bring anything from home, such as medications that we do not supply in the hospital. If you are a sleep apnea patient and utilize a CPAP or BiPAP machine at home, we do ask that you bring that in so that it can be used after surgery. It will need to be inspected by our biomedical team, and once it's given a sticker of approval, you will be able to use that after surgery. This will aid in your recovery and help you rest better after surgery. As far as clothing to bring with you, we do ask that you bring loose fit clothing, um, such as pajama bottoms, uh, that you can wear after the surgery. During your stay in the ICU, you will not be able to wear your home clothes, but once you're on our progressive care unit, you will be able to wear your own pajama bottoms. We will have a monitor attached to you, so it may be difficult to wear your home shirt, which is why we keep a gown on you during the hospital stay. For our female patients, we ask that you bring with you a sports bra or tight-fitting bra, one without an underwire or any metal clasps in the front. 
reason we ask you to bring this is it'll help with pain and incisional recovery. As far as family and visitor information, these are constantly updated within the hospital, especially post-COVID. Please refer to our website, NortonHealthcare.com, for the latest updates on visitation policy. As an added benefit for your family during surgery, we have available cafeterias at both locations, as well as a chapel and chaplain services should your family need them. Your family will be given a card with a unique code that matches a number on the surgery band that you're given, and it'll match a board in our waiting room. This board will be used to update you and your family throughout the surgery as to where your family member is during the process. The nurses will also contact your family member if they are present or a number is given to update them on where we are in surgery. Generally, that nurse will contact you when we're going onto the bypass machine, when we're coming off, and when we're coming out of the room. Following surgery, if your family member is present per current guidelines in the hospital, the surgeon will come out and speak with them or will call them directly after surgery with an update. After surgery, you will be moved directly to the intensive care unit where you will stay for about an hour or two to get settled prior to your family being able to see you. You will have multiple invasive monitoring lines to help us monitor your blood pressure and other vital signs, as well as chest tubes to help drain any residual fluid that may have collected in your chest following surgery. You will also be on the ventilator, which will stay in place until you are able to fully follow commands and awake enough for the staff to remove it. Once in the ICU and settled, the family can come back to visit you after about one to two hours. You can generally expect to stay in the cardiac intensive care unit for one to two days following surgery, although some patients this may be longer depending on your condition. You will then be moved to our cardiac progressive care unit where you will remain for the rest of your stay. All of your invasive monitoring lines and tubes will generally be removed within the first 24 to 48 hours following surgery. You will also work with our physical therapy team who will make recommendations for discharge planning. The care management staff and the social workers will work with you to obtain any discharge things that you will need. You will also be seen by a member of the cardiology team and any other specialists that may need to help in your care. The care management staff and social workers from the discharge planning team will work to ensure a smooth transition out of the hospital. If necessary, they will help arrange and recommend rehab placement as well as secure home health for you. It is the expectation of the surgery team that if you are being discharged home, we will have the home health agency come to check on you at least one time, if not more. We have also recently added a program for our post-surgical patients called Virtual Hospital. It is in this program that we can either do a virtual visit with you or a telephone visit to check on you. We typically will start this one to two days after discharge from your surgery, and you can expect a phone call or a virtual visit once to twice a week for the first few weeks. We will do this until you are able to get to your primary care provider or cardiac rehab program. We'll discuss this a little bit later. You will also eventually be enrolled in cardiac rehab, and this will be start typically three to four weeks after surgery. This is an outpatient physical therapy program that lasts up to 12 weeks and helps to recondition the heart muscle and also help build your endurance. Let's talk about pain for a second. A common question people have after open heart surgery is, will I have pain? We must be very transparent that you will experience some degree of discomfort during the surgery. Pain is a very subjective thing and each patient has a different pain tolerance. Here at Norton Healthcare, we utilize a scale from zero to 10 to help rate your pain, and your nurses will frequently ask you to rate that. If your pain is uncontrolled, we will work hard to ensure that it is better controlled, but understand you may never experience a pain level of zero. This is unrealistic most of the time following any surgery, and cardiac surgery is no different. We have various medication regimens available to us to help ensure you have adequate pain relief. If your pain is controlled, you will be more likely to tolerate the necessary activities and breathing exercises needed to improve your recovery. You can expect to receive IV pain medications while the breathing tube is in place and for about 24 hours after surgery. At that point, we will then transition you to an oral regimen or by mouth where you'll be, when you're able to swallow. You'll also be sent home with some pain medications and if they're not effective at home, you can always call our office and we can certainly talk about other alternative pain options for you. Following your first night in the intensive care unit on the night of surgery, once you are off the breathing machine and doing well and your vital signs are stable, the following morning your nurse will have you up to a chair generally by 6 a.m. The cardiac surgery team is generally rounding on you early in the morning, so expect to see a member of our team by 7 to 8 a.m. the following morning. If everything is going okay, your healthcare provider will have the drainage tubes removed and most of the invasive monitoring lines. Once those lines and tubes are removed, you will be able to transition to our progressive care unit. It is here that you will remain until your discharge home. You will be attached to a telemetry monitor 
for the rest of your stay where we will monitor your vital signs closely, including your heart rhythm. We have an expectation within our heart surgery program that you will walk at least three times per day and sit up in a chair at least three to four times a day. We generally tell you to do this uh, with each meal that you're having. It's an easy time to get up and you can always ask your nurses for help. Should you wanna walk more than that, certainly feel free to do so. Just make sure you talk to your nursing staff and get the okay from them prior to getting up on your own as you will have extra lines and tubes that may make moving around a little more challenging. Each patient after surgery will be on insulin uh, for at least 24 hours after surgery. This is not to say that you're diabetic. It helps regulate your metabolic system after surgery. So don't be alarmed if you see this. We get that quite often after surgery as I'm not a diabetic, but I'm on insulin. This is a very common practice and you will be transitioned off of this within 24 hours if you're not diabetic. If you are diabetic, you will remain on this medication sometimes up to 48 hours after surgery, at which point we'll start introducing your home medications back to, uh, to your regimen. And as far as your home medications are concerned, it's generally the day after surgery that we'll start resuming this as needed. Your healthcare provider, whether it be the nurse practitioner, physician assistant, or the cardiac surgery team member, will review your home medications thoroughly and decide what needs to be resumed. Patients ask us why their home meds are not being resumed as quickly as they would like, and sometimes it's because of an interaction with other medications that you're currently taking. So should you have any questions, please direct them to your cardiac surgery team member, and we'll be happy to answer those for you. Some common issues to be aware of following surgery that we talk about with all of our patients, and this is not just cardiac surgery, but this is generally surgery for any type procedure that you have. One of the main things that we worry about is constipation. This is very common, and it's a combination of pain medicine or narcotics and lack of movement, and you've just undergone anesthesia. The best thing you can do for this is get up and move and try and be as active as possible. This will help wake up your, your bowels and, uh, and help you produce a bowel movement. We do ask after surgery that you remain on a stool softener for a period of a few weeks to help you prevent from straining while having a bathroom move or a bowel movement in the bathroom. Um, this can put a lot of strain and stress on your chest, so we want to avoid that as much as possible. We also have medications available to you to help produce a bowel movement. Uh, so if you need those, please certainly ask your nurse for it or they can contact us directly. Another issue that we worry about after surgery is heart arrhythmias or irregular heart rhythms. Um, we've just operated on the big muscle in your heart. The heart is a muscle. It's irritable. There's some swelling that goes along with that. So it's not uncommon to experience some heart arrhythmias. Okay? The biggest one that we worry about or the most um, lethal one that we worry about is atrial fibrillation. This can occur in the post-operative setting uh, pretty frequently and we do not want you to be alarmed. If it persists, you may need to go home on blood thinners for a period of time, but generally uh, heart slowing medications and heart arrhythmia drugs are prescribed for you at discharge and this generally resolves within one to three months following surgery. Uh, if you do go home on new medications for heart arrhythmias, you will follow up with the cardiology team and they will determine how long you need to stay on these medications. The next thing that we want to talk about is soreness and pain. We've already talked about your post-surgical pain, but let's talk about at home. You're going to start utilizing muscles and, and your chest again that you weren't using in the hospital because of some soreness and some muscle fatigue. This is common, so understand that once you get home, your pain may change a little bit and it's going to turn into more of a dull ache. This can persist up to several months following surgery, and it's not uncommon for this pain to last even 6 to 12 months after your procedure. So let your healthcare provider know if it's abnormal and you're not getting relief at home. Uh, once you're done with your narcotic regimen, we can certainly put you on something like acetaminophen or Tylenol, which can help with some day-to-day -day aches and pains. One of the other complications that we can see after surgery, really it's not a complication, it's more of a, a normal finding that we would expect, is some numbness and tingling both in your chest around your incision and in your leg if you had a bypass surgery where the vein was taken out of. This is certainly common after surgery and will go away over time. This is due to the nerve routes that are regenerating. Another complication that we may see after surgery is the need for home oxygen use. It's not very common, but some patients will need to go home on oxygen, especially if you have any underlying lung conditions that were pre-existing prior to surgery. If you do go home on oxygen, we will arrange an appointment with you with the pulmonary or lung provider to help get you off that medication or for long-term follow-up. Uh, oxygen tanks will be delivered to your room prior to discharge if you need that, and the home health nurse will come out and see you. If you have any questions about this, certainly talk to our care management or social work staff as they can certainly help answer all of these concerns for you. The last thing that we're going to talk about that we see quite frequently in the hospital is electrolyte imbalances. Due to fluid shifting and the effects of post-surgery 
uh, after cardiac surgery, it's not uncommon for your electrolytes to be abnormal. We will replace these daily, and you may even go home on medications like potassium or magnesium supplements. These can lead to arrhythmias or those heart rhythm issues that we talked about earlier, so it's imperative that we keep these levels exactly where we need them. Sometimes you'll go home on diuretics or water pills that help pull electrolytes from your body, so it's important that we replace these as necessary. Now let's talk about leaving the hospital. Generally, you can expect a hospital stay after surgery anywhere from about five to seven days if you're progressing appropriately. Sometimes you may need to stay longer than that, and some patients progress a lot quicker and sometimes get out sooner than that. But our average stay is about five to seven days. Once you're ready to go home, your care management staff and your social work staff will discuss any discharge needs that you may have. They'll arrange for any equipment that you need to be delivered to your home or delivered to your room prior to discharge from the facility. You will also be given instructions for follow-up visits. We have a pretty standardized follow-up program within our uh, cardiac surgery program, so our expectation is that if you have a Norton Healthcare primary care provider, we like you to see them within one to two weeks and we can help arrange that appointment. We also like you to start cardiac rehab within three to four weeks after surgery, which you will be seen in the hospital to arrange that most likely prior to your discharge home. You will come see the cardiac surgery office in four to six weeks and that appointment will be made for you by one of our team members prior to leaving the hospital. The goal is that you have all of your appointments made for you prior to exiting our facility so that it's very convenient for you. Should you need to change any of those appointments, you certainly can, and that's not a problem. You'll just need to contact the individual offices to do so. The other thing that we have started recently uh, post-COVID is a virtual hospital follow-up visit. We have found this is very beneficial for our patients. We can follow up with you immediately after getting home because most time you get home and have a lot of questions now that you're out of the facility and you don't have that ready access to one of our providers. We offer this as a service. You do not have to take it, but we do encourage it. Uh, one of our healthcare team members from the cardiac surgery team will contact you by phone or Zoom one to two days after discharge home. We'll go over your medications. We'll ask that you weigh yourself daily if you have the means to do so and to check your blood pressure once or twice a day, depending upon how your condition is going at that time. We ask that you keep a log of these things so that we can review them at each appointment. Medication adjustments can be made over the phone or through your Zoom appointment without you coming to the office if necessary. So really this is a benefit to our patients and we can certainly keep tabs on you and try to keep you out of our facility. We found that most complications are gonna occur within the first one to two weeks of getting home. So if we can keep close tabs on you during that time, we can really help to keep you out of our facilities uh, and make unnecessary trips back. If you do not have a Norton Healthcare provider or primary care provider and wish to see someone within our program, please let one of our providers know or the care management staff and they can help locate an office appointment for you within our system. If you have a primary care provider or referring provider such as a cardiologist outside of the Norton Healthcare system, it would be your responsibility to make that appointment within one to two weeks. Some other things that we need to talk about going home uh, is home health. We do like to send all of our patients home with home health for at least one visit. This will allow us to keep a close eye on you in addition to our virtual hospital if you do go home. It's not necessarily that you are seen by them, but we do encourage it. And this will all obviously depend upon your insurance, whether or not you qualify. If you have any questions about virtual hospital, please contact our office as on your after visit summary, it will show all of your upcoming appointments prior to discharge from the facility. It will look like there's a lot of appointments because we scheduled these out in advance, but please understand that these may be canceled if you do not need them. It's easier for us to put those on now and take them away later, but do not feel obligated to have to participate in this program if you do not want to. As far as medications are concerned when you go home, we like to utilize our hospital pharmacies. We have a program called Meds to Beds here at Norton Healthcare where medications will be sent to our hospital pharmacies and they will bring them directly to your room prior to discharge home. We found that this is the safest way for you to receive all of your medications and allows you to have time to discuss with the pharmacist any questions you may have about new medications. This is a really great benefit for our patients and we highly encourage you to utilize this if possible. Um, obviously, if you're getting discharged at later times in the day or on the weekend, sometimes they're not open. So if that's the case, we will send them to a pharmacy of your choosing. As far as cardiac rehab is concerned, a cardiac rehab nurse will meet with you during your hospital stay and they will discuss locations for you. Currently, we have three locations within the Norton Healthcare system for you to choose for cardiac rehab at various locations within the city. Your cardiac rehab program will start in three to four weeks following surgery 
and you will be seen by one of the cardiology team members prior to your appointment. Expect this first appointment to last one to two hours and then subsequent appointments to last about an hour. You have up to 36 visits uh, with cardiac rehab and they can, can be completed within the first 12 months following surgery. So do not feel like you have to immediately jump into this if you're not ready or feeling up to it at this time. We talked about provider follow-up, but in summary, we want you to follow up with cardiology, with your primary care provider, and with the cardiac surgery team. Should you have any questions about this, please do not hesitate to call your cardiac surgery office and they'll be able to help you navigate this system and get any necessary appointments that were not made prior to your discharge home. Let's take a minute now and talk about your incisions. If you're having open heart surgery with us, you can expect to have an incision over your breast bone, generally about six to eight inches in length. If you had bypass surgery, you can also expect to have an incision down on the inner aspect of your knee, one or both sides, depending on how much vein was utilized for your bypass. Incision on your knee or on the inner aspect of your knee will be about an inch or so. We ask you to inspect these incisions daily for redness, swelling, and drainage. Let your surgeon know about any change in appearance or drainage or if there's an odor coming from the incisions. The small incisions from your chest tubes may drain off and on. This is normal as is red tinged fluid. If the drainage is cloudy or has any kind of foul odor, let the office know immediately and we can get you in for an appointment. You can use an adhesive bandage to absorb any drainage such as a Band-Aid or if you have any questions, certainly call us and we can talk you out through it over the phone. If you have any steri strips on your incisions, they may be removed about a week after surgery or they may fall off on their own. If you have staples on your incisions, you may need to return to the office for removal in about seven to 10 days or the home health nurse may remove, or even your primary care provider. You also will have some glue on your incisions. Some of the surgeons use a layer of glue. Um, this is normal and it will start to peel off in the shower as you get further out from surgery. It's not uncommon for this to stay on one, two, even three weeks after surgery. So don't be alarmed with this. Your incisions will be bruised and may feel sore or itchy. This is normal. In a few weeks, they'll begin to look better. You may notice a lump or swelling at the very top of your incision here at the top of your chest. Um, this will go away with time and it's okay. This is normal, it's just some swelling and where we had to bring the incision back together. Neck and shoulder and chest discomfort is quite common after heart surgery as we discussed earlier. You can use a heating pad or hot water bottle covered with a warm towel for about 20 minutes to help relieve this discomfort. And you can expect some degree of numbness uh, to last after surgery. I know we talked about this a little earlier, but just to reiterate, numbness along the incision lines, especially here on the chest and really in the leg can last anywhere from six weeks to one year. Um, so don't be alarmed with this. It's also not uncommon to feel your heartbeat while laying down. Uh, for the first few weeks after surgery, this is normal and it's known as cardiac awareness. This will generally go away in a period of about six to eight weeks, but most patients describe it as feeling a heartbeat. They can actually hear it in their ears or actually feel that sensation. So please do not be alarmed with this. You may shower every day to help keep the incisions clean. We ask that you just use a mild soap and warm water. Do not soak in a bathtub, swimming pool, hot tub, anything like that until you're seen by our surgery providers. And you may wash your incisions gently and pat them dry. No special ointments, creams, lotions, or powders need to be used on the incision until you've been seen by our surgery office. After a period of time, you can use mineral oil to help soften the crusty material from that glue that we talked about along the edge of the incision. Once the incision has completely healed and you've been seen by the surgery office and one of our surgery team members, you can discuss with them using things such as scar cream or vitamin E to help uh, minimize the scarring. Most patients find that the scar heals very well and will fade over a period of about eight to 12 weeks. Um, again, we ask you don't soak in any body water, hot tub, pool, jacuzzi for at least six weeks until you're seen by our team. And if you have any questions about that, please do not hesitate to call. Um, if you did have vein removal for bypass surgery, you will have some swelling in your lower legs. This will go away over time. And again, that numbness and tingling can be expected. We will send you home with elastic compression stockings and these will help with that swelling. You should be given a pair before you leave the hospital and be sure if you were not given a second pair to request one prior to going home. If you do not get these before going home, you can contact my office and we can send you in a prescription or you can go to any local medical device company and they can fit you for a pair. Sometimes they do require a prescription, so if so, please call our office and we will fax one over to them. We ask that you do not stand for long periods of time and when you're sitting, elevate your legs on a pillow uh, to help relieve that swelling in your lower extremities. 
Avoid crossing your legs. Um, for those of you that like to do that, we do notice some increased swelling when you do that. So try not to do that for long periods of time. Some kind of follow-up things that we ask you to do when virtual hospital, we talk about your weight and uh, recording your weight every day. So uh, we want you to report any weight gain more than two to three pounds in a 24 hour period. And this can be an indication of any fluid retention you may be having. So the way you weigh yourself is each morning you're gonna get up, wear loose fit clothing, kind of the same thing that you were wearing the previous day, and weigh at the same time every day after you've gone to the bathroom in the morning. This gives us a very consistent weight and we know if we need to change anything, okay? The next thing we wanna talk about is blood pressure control. If you do not have a blood pressure cuff at home, we want you to obtain one. If you don't have one, let our providers know and we can order you one through our home health agency or through our, one of our medical device companies. We ask that you take your blood pressure twice a day, once in the morning before you take your medications, and again later that evening uh, prior to taking your nightly medications. We ask that you write these down for us so that we can then track what your blood pressure is doing. If your blood pressure and heart rate are elevated or too low, we can quickly make medication adjustments on the fly at your office appointments or at your virtual hospital appointments so that you don't have to come into the office. Um, too high or too low of a blood pressure can be complications after surgery, and especially if we've taken you off of medications going home, we may need to adjust those or resume some of those. Again, thank you for watching today. Uh, we appreciate you coming to Norton Healthcare for all of your heart and vascular needs. Should you have any further questions on this video or any follow-up questions to anything you've heard today, please do not hesitate to give my office a call at the number listed below, and we look forward to seeing you in the hospital.